All right, guys, welcome back to another free real estate school training hosted by yours truly, David Dodge, and my partner, Mr. Michael Slain. Today, we are going to be jumping in and talking all about talking to sellers and making cold calls with ease. How so easy, we close fast, and any time that works for you, your house don't need it, we'll throw cash and hit so fast, don't know what to do. All right, guys, welcome back to another free real estate school training hosted by yours truly, David Dodge, and my partner, Mr. Michael Slain. I don't usually get Mike on my trainings, so I am excited to have Mike here with us today, guys. Um, today, we are going to be jumping in and talking all about talking to sellers, and making cold calls with ease. And before we do so, I want to jump on into Real Estate School. Guys, this is an awesome community. If you have not already joined Real Estate School, you need to check it out. We have 764 members, and we are growing like crazy. Today is Tuesday, June 13th. It is 2 p.m., and we are getting ready to jump into talking to sellers and cold calls. Don't forget, over in the classroom, we have free courses on wholesaling, landlording. We have a contract generator. All of the calls are recorded, and we have call replays. There's a course on real estate data, as well as a course on real estate private money. Um, the call replay archive. Look at this, Mike. It's actually starting to get very lengthy. It's built out. There's tons and tons and tons of, of free training built into this archive, or this, this call replay library. So... Very, very, very excited to uh, to talk about that here today. But again, today's training is all about talking to sellers. And today, I don't have any slides prepared um, because I just really want to just have a conversation with Mike. Sweet. And we could even do some role playing if if you you know if you want. Uh, but I just really wanted to kind of just talk about you know what would you what what would we tell you know a new investor. In regards to talking to sellers and having conversations with sellers. And, you know, some of the things that I always want to mention out the gate is that you have to talk to them, right? First and foremost, mm -hmm. you got to have conversations with sellers. It's so incredibly important. This camera is a little crooked today, but we're not going to let that bother us. Um, and really, you know, one of the things that I say a lot on, on our on our mastermind with, with our two two hour calls that we do with our and our mastermind level group is it doesn't really matter what type of marketing you're doing. All marketing essentially leads to phone calls, right? So it doesn't matter if you are doing the cold calling or the cold texting. It doesn't matter if you're sending the mail, they're going to call you. It doesn't matter if you're running a campaign, you know, on Facebook or on Google to drive traffic to a web form or a website. They're going to fill out that form. You're going to get an email. You got to call them. Or they're going to go to that particular web form or that web page. They're going to see a phone number. They're going to call you. Marketing is really just a fancy word for getting sellers on the phone. It's very, very, very simple. So when we are talking to sellers, you know, first and foremost, we want to identify them as being a property owner. First and foremost, if they don't really, if they don't own a property or they don't know somebody that owns a property. Can it's I kind of a waste of time. Go ahead. Interrupt you, yeah, please. So one thing I would say, and I would just kind of back it up even further before we're on the phone, before we're um, even talking to sellers, I would just say there's the fear. Like you got to remember your first time. Yeah. Uh, good point. There's that fear of, oh my gosh, I don't, what am I going to say? I'm going to say the wrong thing. And to that, I say, well, like, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't worry about it. You yeah. are going to mess up and that's Stop okay. It. Somebody is going to be mean to you and that's okay. Like somebody is going to be mad that you're, you called them or that you got their information or something. Right. But don't worry about it. Like it's going to happen. Like just, just keep moving on. I think is, is it's the a great, to that. it's a great point because that I think is the biggest hang up for most people. And they don't really recognize it is that they're afraid to get on the phone and they're afraid to fail. So they don't put all the marketing pieces in place or they don't take the proper action once they have it in place to let it go to voicemail because, oh, well, I want to know what the address is first. And my my voicemail I got set up says, leave your, your name and the property address you're calling about. 
No, 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 no. Pick up the phone. You got to answer the phone when somebody calls because you're yep. spending a lot of money trying to make that or time or effort time, trying to make that effort, phone money. Ring. All of the above. So again, just make sure you answer the phone. That's the most important thing and be a real human being. I mean, that's what people are expecting. And that's what people are going to empathize, sympathize, relate to the most is if you're a real person at the end of the day. So again, just my, my, pre- no, I'm really glad of, you said that. that my, makes- my beginning part of cold calling and talking to sellers is don't be afraid to be yourself, have your own personality and just make sure you answer the phone and actually talk to people. That is key. So yep. again, back to where Dave was at, which is when we're talking to them. And that uh, is a, is a, uh, well, step one, don't be afraid to be yourself. I mean, Mike, that's why I love having you on these, on these trainings with me is because, you know, you're seeing this big picture and sometimes it's good to just be able to talk through these things. So I can't agree more with you cool. is my point. You know, you definitely want to focus on just being yourself. You want to answer those calls. Like Mike said, um, and in the event that you can't answer the call, try to call back as soon as you possibly can. Very, very, very important. Um, once you do get somebody on the phone, it doesn't really matter if they're calling you or you're calling them or they filled out a web form and you called them back or they went to your website and saw your number and called you or maybe they saw a bandit sign or heard a radio ad. It doesn't matter what the marketing is or was. What matters is, is when you get them on the phone, you want to have a plan, okay? You don't just want to say, hey, this is Dave. How can I help you? You know, you want to be you want to be able to answer that call or even intro that particular call with, you know, hey, this is Dave with House Sold Easy. This is, you know, my pitch per se, right? Hey, this is Dave with House Sold Easy. Thanks for calling. Or, you know, I'm calling you today because I'm trying to see if you have any properties that you're interested in selling, right? So you got to have some some sort of a plan. Now, one of the things that I always try to teach and and mention to to, to our mastermind level students is you know, whenever somebody cold calls me, for example, or cold calls you, for example, and they approach it like this. Um, Hi, is this David? And I say, yes, this is him. And they say, hey, David, how are you doing today? Right? Already they've lost me. Already. I never ask a seller how they're doing right away. I'm, I, I, I'll probably ask them at some point during the call but it's never the first or second thing I do, right? Because people are busy. And the last thing they want to do is have their time wasted. All right. So instead, what I say is, hey, this is David, you know, thanks for calling or I'm calling you, you know, in regards to this property that I believe you own over on Main Street. Do you happen to be the owner of that property? And I'm going to essentially right away, I'm going to try to confirm with them or verify is another word we can use that they are in fact the owner of the property. And if they're not the owner of the property, then I'm going to apologize for wasting their time. I may ask them if they own any other properties that I may not be aware of. And then if so, ask them if they have any interest in selling any of these other properties. But that's basically it. It's very, very straightforward. Once that I've verified that they are, in fact, the owner of the property, then I'm going to ask them if they have interest in selling the property. If they don't have interest in selling the property, I'm going to, again, thank them for their time. I'm going to ask them if there's a good a good amount of time that we could schedule to follow up with them, right? So I may say, hey, do you mind if I call you back in you know three months or six months or maybe even just throw out, hey, do you mind if I call you in a year? to see if things have changed and that and to see if you may have interest in selling the that particular property. If they do own the property and they do have interest in selling the property, then I'm going to essentially switch gears and I'm going to do everything in my power to be as friendly as possible with that person. And the ultimate goal from these calls, again, doesn't really matter if it's an inbound call or an outbound call. The ultimate goal is to get an appointment. Now, there's some people that may be watching this that are doing it virtual, and that's fine. You know, an, another another thing that you could have as your goal is, is to get a, a contract signed, right? But essentially, Mike and I don't typically like to buy property sight unseen. I know during COVID, you know, we would send offers before we would go look at properties, but we're really big on just building rapport, getting face-to-face with sellers and viewing the property and then making the offer. 
right? You want to add to that, Mike? Yeah. I mean, I think that's my number one goal is to try to make a friend more than anything else. Dave's got great tips on, you know, don't ask, hey, how are you doing? First question, because it does it just kind of makes you angry. It's like, dude, you don't care how I'm doing. Like, be for real. Like, just like, what do you want? You know, like, what do you want yeah, from me? I had a guy call me yesterday when I was driving home from work and he said, hey, hey, David, how are you today? And I just hung up the phone. Yeah, I was I just. I wasn't trying to be rude, but I was like, I don't have time to be sold something right now. I'm doing a hundred, doing a hundred other yeah. things. You know, if he would have changed the way he opened that call up, I probably would have given him the time of the day. So but I could tell right away he's selling me something. So this brings up a kind of important thing. So I like to make a friend or try to build rapport. And one of the things I always do, and I say it more often, every time we talk about talking to sellers, I say this one is I try to mirror people. So Dave, obviously when he gets a cold call from someone he's busy so his responses are probably going to be a little bit more like this he's probably going to say okay hey what, what's going on what can i help you with hey this is dave so his voice is going to be a lot faster so i would tend to, to talk a little faster like hey dave i'm calling you about this property at 528 dover good point just curious if you're interested in selling whereas there are a lot of other people who are not going to be in that big of a rush you might get the grandma or grandpa man they're just happy to talk to somebody and those ones it's are going to take you a half hour, 45 minutes to find out if they even own the property. Uh, but again, you just take your time and you build a relationship with them. So again, that's my objective is start out with just trying to, one, it's disarming people. I think that's kind of Dave's advice too, is to 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 get in, um, get keep them on the phone, but then to just disarm them a little bit and to let them know that you're um, not just someone who's trying to sell them something. You're there to provide a service. You're there to buy a property. Um, that's another important thing. When, and we don't even need to go down that path, but uh, you're you're calling to provide a service. You're not calling to sell anything. And that's important when we get into all those uh, spam call stuff. That's exactly right. So, that's exactly right. Yeah. So tell them who you are, tell them why you're calling, and then verify with them that you um, are, or I'm sorry, that they are in fact the owner of the property you are calling, or at a minimum, they own a property. If they don't own a property, guys, there's really no reason to waste a bunch of their time, or even more importantly, your own time, talking to them. And 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 you know, because at the end of the day, we're trying to buy properties from people, right? That's the goal. All right. So after we verified that they are who they are. We're going to make a friend. We're going to have the ultimate goal of setting the appointment. But what we're also going to want to do is we're going to want to learn as much about the property as we possibly can. And I know a lot of new people, they're constantly looking for scripts. And I think scripts can be helpful for the very, very, very green, the people that are very, very, very new. But if you have already made 50 phone calls or 100 phone calls, you don't really need a script anymore, in my opinion. And the reason is, is scripts sound scripted. Anytime that somebody cold calls me and they're reading a script, I can tell right away. And the easiest way to tell is because if you go off script and they stumble, it's a big giveaway that they're using a script, right? So one of the things that I like to do when I'm, I'm making calls or even answering calls for inbound leads is to not sound scripted. In fact, I will go out of my way to not sound scripted. So I'll even say, hey, John, I really appreciate you taking my call. You know, uh, this this particular after this particular Tuesday afternoon, um, you know, and, you know, I just wanted to, to see, you know, if you still own that house over on Maple Street. Right. And then if John does own the house on Maple Street, I'm going to say, great, John, you know, I'm looking to buy a few more properties in the area. Um, do you have any interest at all in selling this property? Because if you do, I would love to talk with you further, maybe even come out and view that property. And if John says, yeah, I'd love to sell it, and he's willing to set up an appointment, then I'm going to jump right to that. But if John says, whoa, hold on a second, let's, let's, you know, let's learn a little bit more about who you are or how you got my number, then we can obviously tackle those, those issues, right? So some of the things that I am going to ask whenever I get them on the phone about the property is very, very simple and straightforward, right? So like, for example, how long have you owned the property? Why would you consider or are you wanting or needing to sell the property? I'm going to want to learn more about the property in terms of the size and the number of beds and baths. So I'm going to say, hey, you know, is this property a two bed or a three bed? 
Does it have one full bath or two? You know, and I might even be able to pull the property up on Zillow or Redfin or maybe Batch or PropStream or whatever it is I'm using, maybe even my CRM. It just depends, right? And and I'm going to verify that the data that I'm looking at is in fact accurate. So if I see that it's a 3-2 and it's 1,400 square foot, I'm going to say, hey, John, you know, I'm looking online at the property right now. And that's also going to mean a lot to the other person on the end of the phone because it's going to show them that you are serious and prepared. If you call them and you're like, oh, hold on a second, let me go grab my laptop so I can pull this property up, you're going to most likely frustrate them. You're going to be wasting their time. If you have the property already pulled up whenever you make that call and you can say, hey, John, I see this property is, you know, is um, over on Maple Street and it's a three, two, it's about 1400 square foot. Is, is all that information correct? And John's going to say yes or no. And if he says yes, then move on to more questions. If he says no, then say, oh, well, you know, what is it? Is it a four, two? Is it a two, one? Like, you know, what, how many beds and how many baths and what would you estimate the square footage to be? And most people that own homes, they're going to know this information. They're definitely going to know how many beds and baths it are. You know, they might not know the exact square footage to, to the exact number, but they're going to know the difference between 1,200 square foot and 2,000 square foot. So if you say, it seems it's about 1,700 square foot, does that seem about right? And they're going to say, yeah, that, that definitely seems right. That's great. Okay. Next, I want to learn what, um, what, if any, renovations have been done in the, in the last five to 10 years. And the reason I, I want to know is, you know, five to 10 years is because I don't expect everybody that I talk to, to have just put a roof on the property last week, right? But if they put a roof on the property in seven or eight years ago, that roof's probably in pretty good shape. There's probably no reason for us to, to need to mess with replacing or fixing that roof. But if they say, yeah, we renovated the, the entire house 18 years ago, that property is probably pretty dated. It's probably going to need some upgrades from that 18-year-old renovation. So I want to ask them if they've done any renovations right behind um, verifying some of the data. And then I want to jump into, well, what would you be asking for the property or what kind of number would you consider, right? And then at, sometimes they're going to tell you they're going to have a number in mind. Other times they're going to say, you know, I haven't even thought about that or they're even going to say, make me an offer. And that's fine. No problem, nothing wrong with that. If you don't know what offer to make, then you might want to just say, well, I need to get a little bit more information from you. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that, by the way, to say, I need to get a little bit more information from you. But sometimes people are going to be put and they're going to say, listen, I don't have time for all this. Make me an offer or, you know, do your due diligence and call me back. And when that happens, you know, one of my favorite things to do is just pull it up in Zillow, look at the Zestimate, cut it in half and start there. It's literally 50% of what Zillow says that property is worth. Now, are we going to be willing to pay more than that, Mike? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not, though, yeah. right? It just kind of depends. It kind of depends. So it depends on a lot of things and the people who are pushy with it. And then if they want to get offended with that number, you can say, well, I haven't seen inside the house. So I got a factory and I'm replacing everything. Or the guy that says, eh, that's a decent number. Well, then you're setting yourself an appointment. So either way, I mean, again, you you can shoot yourself in the foot by offering too much, but you almost never shoot yourself in the foot by offering too little. Because Love that. You can play it off when you offer too little to say, oh, I was, price is right rules. Price is right rules. I didn't want to bid over. I don't want to what's bid the, over. What's the right number? Yeah. You know, again, mm -hmm. there, there's plenty of uh, plenty of ways to play it off or to be kind of silly about things um, to to recover from a really low offer. Uh, but Dave, I know you like to to anchor is one of the, the key things. So you like to anchor low. And yeah, that 50% of Zillow is a, is a really good place to start when you don't have all the info or you don't have everything. You That's need. right. So let's talk about anchoring. What is anchoring? Anchoring is, you know, coming out with a really, really low offer. And we do this for two or three really, really important reasons. Number one, we want to we want to solidify or, you know, come in and let them know that we have zero interest in paying full retail for the property. We're going to basically be buying properties, typically speaking, somewhere between 50 and 65% of what Zillow says they're worth. All right. And the reason that it ends up being somewhere in that range is because we're going to essentially going to use what's referred to as the MAO formula. We're going to take that ARV number, which oftentimes is pretty damn close to this estimate, at least in our town, your town may be different. 
but we're going to multiply that by 0.7 or 70%. So we're going to take 30% off the top. And then what's left, we're going to have to subtract out the cost of those repairs. Well, if you do that equation a thousand times on a thousand different properties, it's going to typically average out that what it's going to equal the max allowable offer is going to roughly be between 50 and 65% of the Zestimate or of that ARV number most of the time. Now, there's obviously going to be situations where it's going to be above or below, but the majority of the time, it's going to typically be between 50 and 65% of what Zillow says it's worth. So if they're pushy and they want you to make an offer, that's what I do. I go and I cut the Zillow number in half and I say, you know, I'm typically going to be buying properties in this part of town or in this neighborhood that need work, of course, right, for about this number. And oftentimes I'll even use a range. So I may give them 50% up to 60% of that number. So if Zillow says it's worth 100 grand, I'm going to say, you know, I'm, I'm typically buying properties in this part of town or in this neighborhood for somewhere between 50 and 60,000. Right. But again, these properties are going to typically need work. Does your property, you know, could it use any updates or does it need any work? All right. And and then one of the great things about that question is, is you can kind of move the train of thought or the conversation into, oh, OK, great. Well, what kind of work could the property use? And you can start asking questions to the seller about the condition of a lot of the things. How old is the roof? Are the windows newer? Are they vinyl? Are they old? How about the kitchen and the bath? Could it be updated or was it updated recently? And then, of course, don't discount the systems, guys. How's the water heater? How's the HVAC? You know, is it on a, a, a septic tank? Is it out in the country? Or is this going to be on city water and city sewer? So these are all things that we're going to want to get and ask the seller, assuming that they're going to be willing to talk to us. What am I missing here, Mike? Uh, you know, I kind of zone out sometimes, Dave, and <laughs> I zoned out a few minutes ago prior to this, but did we talk about um, like the qualifying to of the seller or asking, it's like, once you get them on the phone, you disarm them a little bit. Did you ask them, okay, well, is it, is now a good time to talk? You know, I didn't even mention that. Okay. So that's yeah. another one too. Great Before point. we get into all this, I yep. always like to say, is now a good time to talk? Um, and then if they say no, or if they say yes, be like, oh, great. What's a good callback number or what's the best number to get a hold of you at? So again, you want to get make sure that again, because you might call on a landline that they answer once in a blue moon. So you want to make sure you get the best callback number. Uh, you also want to be considerate of their time. That's another thing Dave was the mentioned kind of upfront. Um, and then as far as what we're missing on conversations with sellers, um, I guess how to to wrap up phone calls. Yeah, let's talk about how to that. leave the conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, so one thing, and it's kind of hard and I'm not great at it, but it's to make the seller feel like the property is sold. So this is, this is one where you're kind of trying to eke out your competition. Be like, I'm so excited. I can't wait to come and buy this house. Or Good again, point. just can, if everything you told me is true, let's consider this a deal. I'll meet you at the house Wednesday at five or Wednesday at three or whatever it is. Because mm -hmm. again, you want them to, to have some confidence in the fact that you are actually a buyer. You're the one who is going to buy the house. And you, I mean, that's pretty much it, that you're a buyer and that you are the one that's buying the house. So you want them to feel like that that property is sold. And it's maybe not even that property, it's that problem is solved. Because uh, oftentimes we are dealing with these motivated sellers because they have a problem property or a property that requires work. Like Dave said, there's going to be repairs and they're not always super candid, but they usually don't have the means or ability or whatever it is, the time to repair the property, fix it up and get that full retail value. And that's why they're going to sell it to uh, someone as is. So that's kind of how I like to try to leave phone conversations just be the uh, solution, be the answer, and um, end the call with that, is that, hey, I'm the one who's going to take care of your problems. I'm the one that's going to buy that house. Any other thoughts? I love that, you? man. No, and no, no. Again, that's kind of my my closing or try to try to exit conversations with that. Yeah. You know, by, by, by solidify, I love that Mike, by solidifying that, you know, I'm going to be the one that's going to help you with this, with this property. I'm going to be the one that's going to buy it. I'm going to be the one that's going to be able to take this problem, you know, off of your plate. 
And you don't want to use those words necessarily. No, but that's know? the meaning in yeah. which you're going to want to portray, mm -hmm. right? You know, but, but I love that though. And I, that's something that I'd never even, you know, or I, I shouldn't say never, but that I wasn't even thinking about right this second. But that's something that we definitely are do and we're good at mm -hmm. is we're letting these people know, hey, you know, we're happy that we were able to get you on the phone. We're excited to get to come view this property tomorrow or next week or whenever it would be. And we are excited to be to be making you an offer regardless of what that offer is going to be we are excited and we want to try to get them excited about meeting us at that property as well so that's that's really it there's really not that much to it whenever we're making these calls verify that they are the person that we are trying to reach and or that they own a property let them know who you are and why you are calling uh learn about the property Learn about the updates, learn about the repairs, ask them what they think the cost of those repairs might be, right? Um, ask when you can come out and view it, ask them what they're asking for the property. And they may not have a number in mind, but most of the time, from my experience, they're going to at least have some sort of a range, right? If they want you to make them an offer, go with 50 to 65% of the Zestimate, and you can even use a range if needed. But let them know that you could probably pay more than that, but without seeing the property, you know, that's typically where you're going to be without knowing more about it. And then, of course, the ultimate goal, at least for Mike and I, is to set the appointment, get out face to face with that seller so we can do what's referred to as build rapport, which really at the end of the day just means to make a friend. I want to make eye contact with my seller. I want to shake their hand. Um, I want to be a good listener. I want to ask questions that aren't going to be just yes or no. Now, of course, there's going to be questions that you're going to you're going to ask, or they're just going to say yes or no. That's pretty straightforward. But do your best to try to word your questions where it's going to get them talking. Because if you can get them to do the majority of the talking, you will have much more control than if you are doing the talking. And it may sound counterintuitive. But when they're doing more of the talking, you're going to learn so much more about their motivation, their price, maybe even the time in which they want to close the deal and get it sold. And it's going to give you so much more information to then be able to make a good offer or to follow up or hopefully go grab a contract out of your car, put it on the table and start writing up your purchase and sale agreement with the sellers. So you know, that, that's basically it, guys. Don't overthink it, you know, and um, don't sound scripted, you know, be personal. That's one of the first things that Mike said on this call is, is, you know, do your best to, to be very personal and, um, you know, you don't want to sound like a, like a robot. You want to just try to keep it, you know, keep it very, very normal. Um, and then the last part of this training here is, you know, making cold calls with ease. Well, I think we covered most of it. Uh, but the one thing that um, that we didn't mention is, is that you got to start, you know, you, you just got to start. And, and, and in the beginning, you may stumble. You may say some things that, you know, you may regret saying or may sound kind of dumb. But guys, the best way to learn is to do. Literally, the absolute best way to learn is to do. It's to get on the phone with people and you're going to learn you know, after you make some calls, hey, that call was really well, or that call didn't go so great. And you're going to be able to tweak those things that you did or didn't do to make it better. So I would just encourage you all to just start and pick up the phone and start calling sellers. And if you don't have a bunch of skip traced data, let's say you're going after, you know, vacants or absentees, that's going to be a great place to start. But if you haven't gotten that far yet, you know, one of the best places to start is just call people that have properties listed for sale by owner on the free sites like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, um, even Zillow. You can post your property for sale by owner on Zillow. Additionally, you can start by calling people that have their properties listed for rent on these exact same websites, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, or Zillow. People can go on there. They can post their properties for rent. Now, when you're calling a for sale by owner, you know, you're just going to do like we said on this, on this training. But if you're calling somebody that has their property listed for rent, you're just going to, you're just going to change your pitch just a little bit. You're going to basically just lead that conversation with, 
you know, hey, my name is Dave. I'm calling from Household Easy. I see that you have this property listed for rent. And I just wanted to call and ask, you know, would you consider selling it? Because obviously it's listed for rent. And they may say, yeah, I would consider selling. I've had sellers tell me, you know, I would love to sell it, but I just don't think I can. That's why I'm renting it. And it's like, well, why don't you think you can? And they just don't know, right? Other times they may say, nope, not interested in selling it. I just want to rent it. And then you just say, okay, no problem. But since I already have you on the phone, do you have any other properties that you may consider selling? And that's a big tip right there, guys, is just because they may not be interested in selling the one you are calling about, or maybe even the one they're calling you about, doesn't mean that they may not have other properties that they may be interested in selling. So you always want to ask that question. Mike, is there anything else you want to add to this call or this training today? Um, check out uh, in school. I was going to say, like, you gave some great suggestions to find free ways to find leads. But don't we have, like, a resource or something uh, where they can get a hold of Batch? Like, that would be in my opinion, go out there and do some skip tracing and find some lists. Yeah, in the free in the classroom. Perfect. Over perfect, in the perfect. free wholesale course, I think almost on every module, we have a link. Excellent. And I can share my screen here and kind of show you guys this real quick. So if you're in real estate school and you go over to the classroom and you click on the free wholesaling course, there is um, there is a link to to use batch leads. And this is uh, this is a link that's actually not only going to give you guys a seven day free trial but it's also going to give you guys 1000 property records, right? They yeah, could be perfect. buyer leads, they could be seller leads, and you're going to be able to export those leads for free. Now you're not going to get those leads skip trace for free. You're still going to have to skip trace those leads, but the skip tracing is super, Look super. Look at Dave's affordable. smiling face on there. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Look at that, man. That's nice. That's right. Again, I just wanted to mention that because man, I, I know you love batch. I love batch. And again, we use it so much in our business. oh man every day all so day. without uh without mentioning it would be kind of yeah it would be kind of missing out on that otherwise i don't really have anything else for this call uh if there's any questions from you guys please feel free to reach out uh or if you're not in our mastermind program that's another thing yeah uh, definitely want to want to mention the mastermind group out. we have an awesome mastermind guys and if you are not already i know kathleen's in the group oh, which is awesome uh, but for anybody watching the replay, if you head on over to Real Estate School and on the very, very homepage of Real Estate School, over on the right-hand side, you can see there's a Mastermind Access link. And that link will take you to a page where you can learn more about the Mastermind. Right now, it's 500 to join and 200 a month. We've made this very, very, very affordable for you all. Uh, we are really, really looking to grow the group. And we have a lot of fun on these coaching calls. We just did one last night and we had a lot of fun on that call. So... Well, guys, we're going to wrap this up, try to keep these free trainings somewhat, uh, somewhat, you know, short and sweet. Uh, but again, I just want to emphasize, don't overthink it, right? When you are talking to sellers, be yourself, right? Just ask questions that are going to get you on an appointment. That's the ultimate goal. And after you can, um, you know, make a friend with them, learn more about the property, ask them as much questions, as many questions as you may need to learn about it figure out what the repairs are, figure out what neglected maintenance may be. And then last but not least, ask them what their motivation to sell is, right? How quickly do they want to sell? When do they want to sell? And again, the number one goal from all the calling efforts is to get out in the field and shake people's hands and meet them face to face and go walk these properties. And you are going to have so much more success face to face then you are over the phone. Now, if you're doing this virtual, that's fine. There's obviously ways to, to, to have somebody else go out, you know, or even have the seller get you these pictures. But if you are doing this in your backyard, you want to really, really, really push hard to get the appointment. And that's it. It's very, very straightforward. So guys, thanks for attending. Uh, with that being said, Mike and I are signing off. We got to go look at a house. We wanted to get this, uh, this free training squeezed in today. See y'all later. So easy, we close fast, and anytime that works for you, your house don't need it. We'll throw cash, it hits so fast, don't know what to do. Wanted to care to keep it.